Hi, everybody. So one of the assignments that people sometimes struggle with is the argument analysis. I wanted to talk a little bit about it, why you do it, how you might fill it out. And so I created a sample for you. The argument analysis is an exercise in figuring out how to analyze the construction of an argument. An argument in the classic sense will provide some kind of take on the topic that you're looking into. It will provide reasons to support um, the claim that has been put forward, and it will include counter arguments. So this that we have here is an example of an argument map. What you guys are gonna do with this assignment is you're gonna look at the couple videos that I posted. One's about diet soda and one I think is about uh, LeBron James. Typically I use the diet soda one. Honestly, I think that might be a little easier, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, the assignment sheet has told you guys that you can choose between the two, so I'm gonna leave it to your discretion. What you're going to do is you're gonna watch that argument and you're gonna try and figure it out. You're gonna try and map out what is being said, what things are being offered in support of the claim that's being made, and some potential counter arguments. One thing you might notice, in either of the videos is that there might be a couple clear reasons. There might be several clear reasons. There might be a lot of clear reasons um, and there may or may not be counter arguments. So what we're trying to do here is basically understand how an argument is constructed. So for the most part, what I want you to do is map out the argument, figure out what is being said about the topic, look up a couple reasons, and then provide counter arguments. So here, this is a sample that I did based on an article that I'm going to link for you guys. And I picked something incredibly silly because I did this for my class at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, and I just couldn't handle talking about anything heavy. So I found this article from Southern Living about why Southern people are obsessed with Duke's mayonnaise. So it's completely non-consequential. This is not an important argument. This is the article. So you can see... The topic is Duke's mayonnaise. The subtitle is We Say Mayonnaise, by which we mean Duke's. So you can tell, based on context clues, just skimming the article, that this is going to be pretty heavily in favor of Duke's mayonnaise. So what you want to do when you're figuring out the claim of an argument that you're being presented with is you want to figure out first, what is the author saying about the topic? What is their take? Well, the topic is clearly Duke's mayonnaise. You can see Duke's mayonnaise appearing lots and lots of times in here. So mayonnaise would not be an appropriate answer for the topic. It's specifically Duke's mayonnaise that's being discussed here. The claim, if you read the article, is that Duke's is the best mayonnaise brand. That's the argument that's being put forward. These are a couple of the reasons why. It says the recipe is sugar-free, it tastes homemade, and you can see those things if you skim the article. There are more examples. Um, it's the one, uh, people grew up with it, so that's a favorite. It tastes more like homemade mayonnaise, um, so it has that nostalgia because people grew up with it. It's unsweetened. There are lots of reasons being put forward as to why it's the best. And you're probably going to encounter that in your videos as well. Pick two. I picked two reasons that I thought uh, were listed. There are more there. What we're looking at here is an argument map for an inductive argument. An inductive argument is a generalization that is based on lots of little specific details. So we could have more and more boxes. There are lots of reasons. I'm gonna pick two. So I picked that the recipe is sugar-free and it tastes homemade. Those are the two supports that I decided to use. I could have easily chosen uh, because it reminds people of their childhood. That would be another reason um, that could potentially go here. But that's not the one I picked. You guys just need to pick two. Um, and they need to be reasons that support this claim. The reason that I am pointing that out is because it is easy sometimes to 
mix up counter arguments and arguments. One of the reasons we put this into a box is so that you get a really clear idea of the structure of an argument. People don't necessarily present their ideas in such a structured way. Often people will say Dukes is the, is the best mayonnaise brand. It would be very easy to say because it doesn't taste gross like Hellman's. That is more of a counter argument. It's more of a comparison. When you have all these reasons and counter arguments flying at you, they're not necessarily going to be presented in an order that makes sense. You are not necessarily going to be reading and you, you like this is actually this topic claim. I have rephrased that. Sometimes you will be able to find a clear thesis statement written right there, boom, and that's going to be a topic or claim. Sometimes you're dealing with something with an implied thesis statement, and you're going to have to use all of the context clues in the entire article or the argument or the video itself to figure out what the author thinks about the topic. And like I said, I want you guys to be really careful. Uh, be really careful with the diet soda video in terms of this. Really figure out what the video is saying. Because a lot of times when we go into an argument, especially if we're kind of trying to map and it's new to us and, and we get a little confused, we have a tendency to just pick whatever seems the most logical. And that is not what you want to do. Don't just pick out like diet soda is bad for you. Diet soda is good for you because that's what you've heard before. Listen to the argument. You may have to do some digging and really pay attention to what's being said to get the implied topic. Or you might be really lucky in the first five seconds of the video, they might say diet soda is the best thing since sliced bread. It's great. You have to keep an ear out to hear what is actually being said about the topic because it's not always going to be presented in a logical order. And that's the same with the reasons and the counter argument. I'm not looking to see if you can read an article in order. I'm looking to see if you can follow logic. And what I mean by that is if I were to ask you, what are two reasons that Dukes is the best mayonnaise brand? Well, the response would be the recipe is sugar-free and it tastes homemade. These are both reasons that actually support this topic or claim. So make sure when you're putting things here that they are supporting what this is saying. Now, the counter argument is something that might be new. A counter argument is what the other side would say in response. Typically in a strong classical argument, you will have your claim, your argument, You'll have some reasons as to why you support that claim. And you will address the counter arguments, the worries, the concerns, the responses that the opposing side might have. In a traditional argument, you also offer a rebuttal to that counter argument. But today, we're not looking for rebuttals. We're just looking to see what the opposite side might say. Now, in the case of my article, my article doesn't do a good job with counter arguments. There are no counter arguments in my article. So I have to come up with counter arguments myself. Notice how the counter argument is a response to this point. It doesn't talk about this in the article. It doesn't talk about this in the article. You may have some counter arguments in your video ready made. You may have to create these yourself. Ultimately, what I'm looking for is that you fill out this whole worksheet and that the logic makes sense. So in my case, I said the first reason was the recipe sugar-free. Boom, there it is. My counter argument to that is some people like the sugar, which is why many people prefer Miracle Whip to any mayonnaise. That is what an opponent might say in response to my reason, well, you should like Dukes. It's the best because it's sugar-free. Somebody who disagrees would say, well, but I, I actually prefer the sugar. That's why I like Miracle Whip. This is a direct response to this. That's why there's a little arrow pointing down. So don't just find random counter arguments and stick them in here. You want to figure out what the response would be to this reason. This one, the reason is it tastes homemade. And my response to it is the rhetorical question, well, why should I pay for it then? If it tastes homemade, why wouldn't I just make it myself? And I could probably elaborate on this. Um, maybe the question isn't the best way to go. But you can see that what I have here is a response to this. If somebody says, well, it's the best because it tastes homemade, my response is going to be something like, well, then why not just make it at home? If that's what you want, why wouldn't you just make it at home yourself? 
Um, that is the counter argument specifically to this point. All of these um, are in my own words. You can see I didn't put entire sentences in. I didn't tr transcribe anything. So if you're like reading a video, don't worry about furiously transcribing. You're not looking for the exact sentence as it appears in the video. You're looking for the logic. Think about this as an exercise in logic. We're going to do this as a way to see how your brain works when dealing with logic. Then when you go to write a paper, eventually, you're going to fill out something that looks similar to this on your own for your own paper. And when we talk about doing it for your own paper, it will be on your own topic that you've been working on so far, or if you're sick of that topic, on a new topic. You do not have to write your paper on diet soda or on LeBron James. <laughs> um, that's not a requirement. Uh, what we're talking about with this exercise, and that's why it's only worth 20 points, is just a chance for me to see how you look at things in terms of logic. Can you read an article? Can you see an argument in the wild and figure out what the claim of it is, what some supporting reasons are, and what some counter arguments might be? Might be. So the topic, you should be able to tell from the video. What you're looking for for the whole claim is what is the video saying about the topic that you've identified? There are reasons, there are more than enough reasons in the videos themselves that you should have a reason that the video points out for reason one and reason two. Counter arguments may or may not exist already in your video. The most important thing is that it all makes sense. Is this the right claim? Do these reasons support this claim? Does this counter argument contradict this? oppose this, bring up a new point against this, and does this counter argument bring up a new point against this? So you want to make sure that you have two reasons and two counter arguments that speak to those reasons when you're trying to think about mapping an argument. So this is just an exercise in mapping an argument, and hopefully that makes sense.